Hey folks, okay. Well, in Lisp, we can actually treat symbols as a data type and we can pass them around. Um, we can store them in variables, we can pass them to functions as parameters. So not only can I have a variable x, I can look at the name of the variable x within the code. So again, these are what we would typically refer to as identifiers but we can actually treat the identifiers themselves as code within our Lisp programs. So there's a bunch of different functions available for looking at symbols, for seeing if a symbol is actually in use in the program. And we can go beyond that and actually store additional properties with symbols. So I can do things like say, okay, well, the symbol X, which I know is currently bound to a variable someplace, um, I'm going to associate a uh, type information with it, or I'm going to associate um, some string information with it. So I can pick and choose new fields, um, new pieces of information to associate with whatever symbols I've got in my program. So this is what we'll have a play with for the next little bit. All right, so first off, if we've got some function, you know, whatever it's doing, we can go through and say, I want to actually pass a symbol to it. So if ordinarily if I do a, a function call like f of x, then it's going to go through and figure out what variable x, what value variable x has and pass that value, right? It evaluates x and passes that. If I throw a quote in front of that, then I'm saying don't evaluate x, pass the symbol x, pass the identifier x, if you like, as data for the function to play with. And so inside that function, we would actually have the name of x as a value we could play with. So that's the, the first thing to think about. And we have to consider what we are able to do with that. So we can start um, picking symbols to have meanings. So I believe earlier in a couple of our examples, we did things like returning an error symbol to mean that something had gone wrong, right? So if we've got a function that's supposed to return a list, but we want and we want to be able to return, you know, a, a list as a result or an empty list, a nil, we can't very well return nil as an error value, right? We want something distinct, something that's not possibly valid, something that's different to return. So maybe we pick a symbol and I just decide I'm going to use the symbol error or the symbol error or the symbol, I don't know, function error or something like that to represent some special meaning. So um, the example I gave here is a horrible list error. So we could actually have our function return this symbol, a horrible list error, to have some special meaning. Right now, obviously, the whoever called the function has to know that they have to expect this kind of thing as a possible return value. But again, it gives us the ability. Now, when a variable is actually used, or when we declare a variable or declare a constant or declare a function within our Lisp programs, what we're doing is saying, okay, here's a symbol and associate some kind of value with it. Associate this function with this symbol or associate this variable value with this symbol. So that's called binding something to the symbol. So if I say something like def var x3, then I'm binding the value 3 to x. Any symbol that doesn't have a, a value bound to it is just simply a symbol, like our horrible list error, right? It didn't have a value associated with it. It was just this random symbol. So there's functions to check if something's a symbol and to check if it's got a value bound to it or not. So symbol p returns true if x is a symbol and false if it's not. Bound p returns true if it's a symbol and it's got something bound to it. But bound only checks for variables. Essentially, there's one list someplace that's keeping track of declared variables and a separate list that's keeping track of declared functions. So there's another one called fbound p to check and see if that symbol has been bound to a function. So maybe let's uh, just have a quick play with those for a second. So here we've got, we're going to create a global variable x, and we're going to create this function f. And f's going to take one parameter, a, and it's going to see if what got passed to it was a symbol. 
And if it was, it's going to say you passed me a symbol. And if it wasn't, it's going to say you didn't pass me a symbol. Nothing too fancy. It's just showing the use of symbol p here in a function. And I'm going to create one more variable here, y. Only what I'm going to store in y is a symbol. So I'm not storing the value of x in y, I'm storing the actual symbol x, the identifier x, if you like, in y. So if we wanted to just try a bunch of tests, is x a symbol? And so we ask, you know, so we throw the quote in front so it doesn't try and evaluate x, otherwise it's going to say is 3 a symbol. So is x a symbol? And we'll do the same with a few others. Is q a symbol? Is t a symbol? Right? And as long as I'm throwing these single quotes in front, it's going to say all of them are symbols. I hope. We'll give it a try in just a second. Now, we stored this symbol for x in y, so we can check that out as well. So here we'll call symbol p and we'll pass it y. So in this case, it's going to evaluate y, since we didn't throw a single quote in front. But what y's got stored inside it is, in fact, a symbol, right? the symbol x. And then we'll try a couple of function calls. So we'll call f, and f is going to look at whatever it was passed and see, is that a symbol, yes or no? So we'll pass the symbol x to f. And that should come back and tell us that yeah, x is a symbol. And we'll pass the contents of y to f. And again, since the contents of y are a symbol, it should come back and tell us that yeah, that's a symbol too. We'll check and see if some of these things are bound. Is, x, is the symbol x bound to a value? It should come back and say yes. Is f bound to a value? Now in this case, since f is actually bound to a function, bound p is going to come back and say no, it's not. Or at least I hope it will. And then we'll try the same sort of thing. Is x bound to a function? Right, f bound p. And hopefully it comes back and says no. Is f bound to a function? And hopefully it comes back and says yes. Um, is plus, this, the plus operator, is that bound to a function? And again, hopefully it comes back with a yes. And so let's just give this a quick try. So yeah, it's going through asking, is x a symbol? Yes. Is q a symbol? Yes. Is t a symbol? Yes. Is f a symbol? Yes. Is plus a symbol? Yes. Does y contain a symbol, right? It contained the symbol x. So yeah, it says yes. Um, we pass x to f. And um, it says, yes, you passed me a symbol. The nil is coming from the, the return value of the format statement. So yes, it says you passed me a symbol. So x was in fact, uh, or passing quote x passes a symbol. Y contained the symbol x. So when we passed y to f, yeah, that worked out too. Uh, it says that yes, x is bound to a value, right? That was our def var three. Is f bound to a value? No, because it's a function. Is x bound to a function? Nope. Is f bound to a function? Yes. And is plus bound to a function? Yes. Yay. So things actually worked out. Uh, let's see. Now, we can unbind a symbol. So if you've declared this variable x, for instance, and I no longer want it to be bound to whatever it was bound to, you can actually make it unbound. And similarly with functions, if you've got some function that you've declared and you want to make it unbound, kind of like undeclaring the beastie. Uh, you can go through and compare symbols. So the, if I've stored the symbol x in one variable and the symbol y in another variable, it can be a little dicey to compare the two of them. There is the possibility to convert a symbol to a string. So this is basically saying look up whatever symbol is stored in S1 and convert it to convert it, its name to a string. And then we'll just use string equals to compare these things. So if you ever run into issues comparing variables that are storing symbols, this is one workaround. Just as a just in case. Uh, let's see, the last thing that I wanted to mention associated with symbols is the idea of property lists. So sometimes we're going to want to associate extra data beyond just the value associated with a variable, for instance, or with a, a symbol. We might want to store a little bit of extra information. So what we can do is there's a get function that will actually look up all of the properties associated with a symbol. So you give it 
or look up the, the value of a specific property associated with a symbol. So you give it the symbol that you're interested in and the property that you're interested in, and it looks up the value of that property for that symbol or nil if it doesn't exist. So we can associate properties with a symbol using setf. So you say, okay, well, basically with this symbol and this property, I want to associate this value. And you can create as many of these things as you like. Right, so I might say that for the symbol pi, I want to associate uh, the property hidden type and uh, the, con the value constant. So I can go through and associate new data values. They are essentially, they are properties, but you can treat them like extra data, extra information about these. You can get the entire list of properties associated with any given symbol and you can remove a property from a symbol. So these are things that we'll come back and play with a little bit later on, but keep in the back of your mind that you can start if you want to ex associating extra information with the symbols in your programs. All right, that seems like a good place to leave for now.